uh, let's really start with the absolutely obvious. It was a very tough settlement. And uh, I do know that councils are facing very difficult choices. But so is the nation. Uh, public debt is approaching nearly a trillion pounds. Last year the government was borrowing one pound for every, every four pounds spent. And uh, we spend more in interest payments on public debt than we do on schools. It was completely unsustainable. It risks our economic credibility and our economic future. And the really hard truth is that you can't ignore a quarter of public spending. And I think councils recognise that they have an important role to play in bringing down public sector debt. But given the track record of local authorities, who have tended to be more prudent, more efficient than other parts of the public sector over the past few years, I have every confidence that local authorities will rise to the challenge. Against that background, it's not easy uh, to increase productivity and reduce back office services without hitting the front line. Leicestershire and Nottinghamshire are planning to save £2 million a year through sharing the back offices. West uh, London councils are looking to go even further and share many frontline services. Bath is cutting back its top team, so money can go to the front line. Leighton Buzzard is saving money thanks to good housekeeping over the past few years, which they can now invest in actually improving some services. I'm also really pleased about the number of councils who are coming together to share services and work through these challenges uh, together. I'm really impressed by the numbers who are biting the bullets on senior pay and sharing chief executives. I'm also very grateful for those who are recognising the importance of transparency and I'm pleased to report that we now have over 200 councils have put their spending online. Of course, there are some councils who have been grandstanding to the media. And if you'll forgive me, I'm not going to address them today because they simply aren't listening. I'm more interested in working with the majority of you who have stepped up to the plate. I want to make sure you have everything you need to tackle these challenges head on. The localism bill uh, will make a very big difference, and I know you've been uh, giving evidence. And I want to uh, thank the NLGN uh, for who've worked so constructively with us to shape the best possible deal. When I was in opposition, uh, you helped organise a series of meetings that frame my idea of the general power uh, of competence. And it's my hope that uh, you'll be able to look at to offer uh, that kind of um, facility as we move towards um, uh, repatriating uh, the business rates. For the first time in decades, council will have real bite, real powers to say over issues that matter uh, to local residents. But some um, other parts of a much more radical uh, redistribution of power so that community groups and residents have a much greater say over their lives. There's a night of irony that the main criticism coming from uh, the opposition Labour Party is that the bill doesn't go far enough. And then they say that there's a real risk that the new powers will be abused. There is a real opportunity to be ambitious, for councils to be radical, and to have a powerful vision for their area. There's also a great threat to localism on the horizon, and I believe that this represents the biggest threat to localism, which fills Middle England with rage, and that's cuts in bin, in bin district collections. Let me be frank. If councils can deliver a service that the public likes and have confidence in, I think it's a matter for them. 
But we need to remember that rubbish is the most visible, most frontline services of all. Uh, in return for paying out the best part of £120 pounds a month in council tax. If we don't sort this out, I think that the cause of localism will be set back by a generation by creating an army of residents who view their council with resentment rather than with respect. There is genuine anger that over the past decade council tax bills have doubled but bin collections have passed. In the public's experience, the iron fist of the municipal state has come down on people for the most minor of bin breaches. State officials, town hall bin police, people I once described in opposition but wouldn't do now, as a Taliban, rifling through the family's bins without consent. Good Samaritans who pick up fly tipping are admonished for dropping it off at the local dump. Pensioners face larger fines than shoplifters for offences of not closing a bin lid. I don't think, I do not think of anything more cohesive, co um, anything more that would destroy uh, trust in local councils than the last government's stealthy imposition of bin cuts through fines and bin taxes. But it's politically naive think this has been purely a consequence of local decisions. It most certainly has not. All these bin policies have come from central governments, interventions and interference. Cooked up in Whitehall, with councils picking up the blame. With almost no debate in Parliament, the last government changed the law, weakening the requirement to collect bins and allowing bin charging. The Audit Commission marked our councils for refusing to go for fortnightly and issued guidance for jolly councils to restrict their service to households. Quangos urged councils to impose fortnightly collections, recommending that after local elections would be the best time uh, to avoid being a political issue and, quote, to overcome political resistance. These central policies result in a perverse local outcomes which need to change. So we've already taken steps to abolish bin taxes. We're scrapping the Audit Commission's interfering inspections. We've issued new guidance to stop that bin sweeping. And the government's waste review will set out a proper roadmap. We intend to work with councils to increase the frequency and the quality of rubbish collections starting with removing the perverse incentive that have pushed councils to cut services. We want to make it easier to go green, championing innovative things uh, like the recycle bank, which rewards recycling. And we will tackle public concern over civil liberties aspects of inappropriate enforcement practices while clamping down on fly tipping that blinds our laybys, our side streets and our countryside. The local government sector must wake up to the fact that even with the best intentions, public policy on bin collections went horrendously wrong under the last administration. But if we need to address the issue which threatens localism, we also need to look at those forces which will give it real bite. In particular, I want to make sure that councils have the economic freedom to go their political independence. We've taken steps, small steps I think, in the right direction. With a couple of exceptions, we've ended ring fencing so that councils get the money with no strings attached. We're also letting them borrow against future uh, growth of business rates. But there's need for a much more fundamental reform. So the system needs to be more transparent, not a formula that Einstein himself struggled to understand. When I first arrived in the department, I was told that there were only three people uh, within the department that truly understood the way in which the grant formula worked, but was told the sad fact that uh, none of them 
had ever met. And uh, when eventually I did see the formula, uh, it was beyond uh, comprehension. And I found that when we did seek to do the distribution, the only thing you could really do to change things was to look at flaws and to look at relative uh, at need. So we will break Council's uh, financial dependency on such movement, having come round uh, with the begging bowl and saying, please, sir, uh, I, want, uh, I want some more. is isn't really a mature relationship uh, that we need. The key is letting Council's key push more of their business rate. In one fell swoop, we can make the system more straightforward, make Council's more self-sufficient, give them genuine financial stake in the local economy, which will go hand in hand with our proposals for local enterprise partnerships. Of course, this is not without challenge. There are important uh, issues we need to work on. We need to keep protecting the most vulnerable councils who don't have a strong uh, tradition of private uh, enterprise. We won't be simply cutting all councils uh, loose. We need to make sure the business community has certain certainty and stability for its needs. I want to give councils the green light to become more innovative and to work more closely with business, not to rack up the business rates. But I think with your input, we can sort these issues out sensibly. We can strike a new balance so that those councils can become more sufficient and trapped in a financial straitjacket anymore. And all councils, whatever their circumstances, are rewarded for promoting growth. So in the short term, I know councils have got uh, some very tough decisions to make, but I feel optimistic about the long term. I believe that in a relatively short period, councils will be almost unrecognized of what they are today, much stronger, more dynamic, more powerful, with political autonomy and financial independence, and with much more direct, responsive relationship with their residents. This is the most ambitious, most innovative councils are already heading down that road. I think there is a tremendous opportunity for every council to be able follow suit. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>